Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for um, our webinar on guidelines and priorities. We're going to get started in just a few minutes. We'll um, let a more people, a couple more people, come in, and then um, and then we'll start. And so we will give the presentation and then uh, give. Uh, some time for a question and answer afterwards. So again, thanks for joining us um, and taking the time this evening to be with us. Okay, I'm gonna get started. Um, so welcome again, my name is Lisa Simmons. I am the program manager for the communities team here at Mass Cultural Council. Uh, the communities team is made up of the local cultural council program, the cultural district initiative program, and half of the festivals and projects program that is also run by the cultural investment portfolio as well. Uh, we are here tonight to talk about the new FY24 guidelines for local cultural council members. Um, and we are also going to talk a little bit about uh, priorities and guidelines, which need to be updated uh, for you uh, by August 31st. So um, let's get started. Uh, oh, and uh, before we get started, I'd like to introduce some of our uh, community members, community team members that are here. Um, and do you want to introduce yourself, Hanako? I'm Hanako, I'm one of the program officers um, in the community's team, and I'm working with the cultural councils in um, North Central Mass and Plymouth County. I'm going to pass it to Jay, who's also here supporting us. Hey, everyone. I'm Jay. Um, I help oversee uh, Southeastern Mass, Hampshire County, and the Cape, and I'm looking forward to working with you guys this fall. Hi everyone, I'm Timothea. I work with communities in the greater Boston area, greater Springfield area and the islands. And I also help oversee the festivals and projects grant program. Thank you everyone. So also before we get started, I just wanna let you know that we do have closed captions available and you simply are gonna click on that more button that's down on your screen. And if you just click on captions, you can have the option to either show the captions or hide them. And there's also an opportunity for you to watch the webinar in the uh, full view, the text full view version. So if you have any problems or issues with that, please drop uh, your question in the um, Q&A section of the webinar. Um, and that's the other thing. If you have any questions that are coming up as we're going through uh, this webinar, please put them in the Q&A. Uh, and that way, Jay and Timothea will be able to answer your questions as we go along. And then we'll also answer some of them live when we finish the webinar. So um, I think that covers all of that. So let's get started. So, um, so as we said, we are four members of a seven member team. Um, we're missing two of our members tonight and we are in the process actually of bringing on a new member that is gonna be handling the Worcester and South Central areas and regions of the Commonwealth. So this is your team that is always here to support you. So we just wanted to start off, we always like to start off a little bit just talking about the Local Cultural Council program. Uh, as you probably already know, it is the largest decentralized grant making network in the country. You are um, a, a very important part of this uh, Commonwealth and also a very important part of the arts and culture around the country. You are, you know, Massachusetts is the only state uh, that has a local cultural council in every single region. So you are incredibly special. Um, you uh, are, a local cultural council program is funded by um, right now by an allocation that was given to us by the legislature. It was originally funded by lottery earnings. Um, and oftentimes you might hear it referred to as the arts lottery. It is no longer that. But the allocations each year are based on the amount of funding that the Mass Cultural Council receives. So you will know what your allocations are this coming week as we have our council meeting and our spending plan is approved. So please look for that. It'll come through our GMS system. Um, and then it will also be on the Smart Simple, your Smart Simple program will list what your allocations will be. 
uh, as I said, every single um, city and town, the 351 cities and towns um, in Massachusetts has a local cultural council that are represented by 329 LCCs because some of those uh, LCCs are regional, meaning it could be two uh, LCCs have come together to form a region or eight or 10 have come together. If you are interested, uh, not this grant cycle, but even thinking about it for FY25, and you're thinking that you might want to be a regional council, um, it's something that we completely support. And sometimes, especially in smaller communities, it's um, it's easier to get members uh, to help with the grant processing. Please talk to your program officers if you are at all interested in becoming a regional council, um, and we can walk you through that. Uh, as you know, the LCC guidelines that we're about to go through are basically based on what the legislature has determined uh, in the um, in the legislation about must-haves from the statute. So um, Hanako is going to be talking to you a little bit more about creating your own local guidelines and priorities and the difference between the two. There's no sound. Someone's saying that there's no sound. Can you guys hear me? Can it, it might be coming from uh your computer so i think that uh so we're seeing that other people can hear okay great wonderful so everyone's fine okay so maybe if you put your question in the chat jay or timothea can work with you to make sure that the sound is coming through awesome thank you um so uh so yes yeah, so if you're so basically um if you want to create your own local guidelines that's something that hanukkah is going to talk about but right now, our guidelines that we're going to be going over are the state guidelines um, and the expectations that we have for LCC members. Thank you, Hanukkah. Uh, so um, your local guidelines can be found here, and we are going to share this PowerPoint with you. So anyone who's here with us today, we will make sure that you get a copy of this. But just want to go over the purpose um, of the guidelines is basically to provide guidance to you. Uh, in order to set policies and procedures when you're awarding and distributing um, grant amounts. Also, you know, it helps to have the guidelines to ensure that there's a thoughtful and transparent process of distributing the money and to sort and really to help you think through not only the granting process, but also all sorts of other things that might come up during the grant cycle. So um, anytime you have any questions about the guidelines and there may not be, you might need some clarity, please reach out to your program officer. So your primary responsibilities of an LCC are, you know, a, a number of things. Um, to do community input, which uh, we always like you to do sometime around the end of May, beginning of June, is to really find out what the what your community is interested in for, for the coming up fiscal year. So that can be done through surveys. It can be done through getting a table at a local festival and just sort of asking your community what it is they'd like to see um, culturally around your community. The other thing is, to award grants. As you know, we're in the grant cycle. We're about to start at September 1. I hope everyone's excited about, you know, all the things that are going to be coming in um, for your communities. So <clears throat> that's um, that's a big, huge part of your responsibility. One of the things that we uh, have talked about in the past is to be thinking about, you know, not giving out grants less than $250. And we do understand that sometimes people apply for, you know, just a $100 grant. Um, and that's fine, but just really as you're going through the grant making process and you're seeing what people are asking for, just to be thinking of um, not making grants under $250. And if you have questions about that, again, your program officers are an amazing source. The other thing is really to be a resource for your local community. The, we have a lot of resources here at Mass Cultural Council that we can share with you, that you can share with your, um, your, your creative community. And don't hesitate to ask. We send out a newsletter every month with all sorts of resources and information. So if you're not getting that, please let us know and we'll make sure that you're on that list to get that. Um, and then the last thing really is advocating for the arts at the local and regional level and, and the state level as well. You know, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be able to do the work we do without really the local cultural council program supporting, talking to your municipalities, talking to your state legislators. It's really um, so much because of you and the work that you've done advocating for arts in your local communities, and we can't thank you enough for that. So these are really the basic responsibilities of the local cultural councils. So we're going to go through the new um, FY24 guidelines, and we're going to do a quick review of them. 
I do want to say that if you're a new member, this is really, um, you know, to, to delve into this and really go through these, these guidelines. And as an existing member, there have been some changes. So it's always a really great idea to refresh yourself. We're not going to hit every single point on them, but they are on the website. You can find them there. You can download them. You can have them while you're having your council meetings is always a good idea. So um, we're going to scroll through them. And then uh, if you have any questions uh, at the end of the presentation, feel free to put those questions in the Q&A. So here we go. Um, you'll have your table of contents that'll give that'll bring you to exactly what it is you might be looking for. <clears throat> so you should be able to find those right here. And then um, it goes into the the basically what we already talked about um, was which was the what the local cultural council program is. So. Um, so basically, we talked about the purpose. We talked about a little bit about the establishment of the local and region, regional cultural councils. You know, if you have time, we also have a great history of the local cultural council program on the website. If you want to read a little bit more about it um, and how it was started and who started it, um, it's really quite a fascinating uh, story. And as I said, you were one, you know, the only state in the country that is doing what you know what you're doing and that is having representation in every single city and town um membership on a local or regional cultural council is uh is is supported by your your municipal authority the person in your municipality who can appoint people to boards um so we as you know you need to have at least five members in the grant cycle during the time of voting so right now you don't have to panic if you don't have five members it's okay, but you really need to be thinking of, you know, towards the you know middle of October, beginning of October, to making sure that you have those five members. And, you know, we have sort of some ways in which you can um, bring on new members, some tactics on asking people to be members. So if you are stuck and you're like down two members or you're having trouble finding people in your community to be members, please reach out to your program officer and they can help you um, figure out how to do that. Um, so the other thing, um, as far as membership, you do have to select a chair and a secretary and a treasurer that is part of the legislation. Uh, it can be a co-chair, um, two people can share the duties of a secretary. The important part of having a treasurer is just making sure that you have that person who is connected with the municipal fiscal officer to help you go through the LCC account form. Um, so um, the other thing about, um, you know, for the treasurer, and for the chair of the council, the management of the cultural funds is, is um, cultural council funds are really important. You have to make sure that those funds are in one account. And that means if you are fundraising, if you get a municipal match, um, you get the allocation from the local cultural council, someone graciously wants to donate to the cultural council because of all the amazing work you're doing. Um, all of that funding needs to go into one account. And that one account, from that one account is where you make all your distributions and where the municipal officer makes their distributions. I know, excuse me, we have learned um, in the past that some um, towns, cities and towns have separate accounts and that that is absolutely not the way it should be. The way it should be is that it's in one account and you'll find out why um, when you, if you come to the webinar on the LCC account form that we're having mid-September about why all of those funds need to be in one account so that it's easier for you to account for the money you have and what you have left over for, um, for granting. The other thing is, is you may have unspent funds and you'll know this when you get meet with your um, town accountant, um, you know, during the month of September. And if you have unspent funds, those are always gonna get rolled over to the next fiscal year. So uh, we have instructed the town accountants or the municipal fiscal officers as they're going over this with you to talk about not only what you spent in FY23 and where your books are there, but actually what you spent going into fiscal year 24, which started on July 1. Um, as you know, councils can take 5% of their fiscal year allocation for administrative funds. And uh, this is great because it, it, it can you can use it for postage, publicity, printing things, you know, even paid staff, uh, you can use your 5% for. So 
just think about that, uh, about the things that you're going to be doing over the course of the year. The other thing is, which is what we love, we love when councils do council initiated programs. Um, a lot of you have done them in the past couple of years and have really sort of you know started to do more of them. And we're really excited about that. You have 20 and we increased um, your allocation that you can that you can use to 20 percent of your allocation to do your council programming. Uh, this is a great way to for the council to come together as a um, as a group to think about something that they want to do for their city or town that maybe they feel there's a need for um, and it, uh, it it hasn't come up. And so they want to do a festival or they want to do like a stroll or something like that. So be thinking about this as you're moving into your grant cycle, as you're holding your meetings about whether or not this is something that you might want to do, a council program. You don't have to name it right away, but you will have to put the money aside from your allocation to go into this. So this is going to be all part of your granting money. Um, you can fundraise from other sources. If you have any questions about that, please reach out to your fiscal, I mean, your um, your program officer. So uh, we already talked about the local duties, um, about um, sort of like expectations. This goes into it a little bit more. Um, and then the council priorities and local guidelines is something that Hanukkah is going to spend some time on because we really want to make sure that you get those priorities and guidelines in uh, before September 1st. So, you know, one of your biggest, um, you know, responsibilities is this financial report that you're going to need to do. Uh, it's, you know, um, basically it comes in three parts. You have the stuff that you're doing now, which is the guidelines and the priorities, and then comes the voting on grants, and then comes the annual report, which happens at the end of January. So this will, this goes into all of that um, information and will, and so, as I said before, we were, we will be having another webinar on the financial accounting and the financial reports mid-September um, once you've either had a chance to meet with your fiscal officer um, or you've looked at sort of the grants that you've made and an assessment going into this fiscal year, come to that um, that that webinar training and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, so, uh, so yes. Yeah, so, and then we also will be having a, a, a training on the applications coming up as well. Um, so let's see, assuring compliance. Uh, so your annual report, as I just said, is going to be actually due on January 17th. So as the guidelines state, the grant cycle opens on September 1st. This year it is closing on October 17th, which is a Tuesday. So just so you know that. So once, um, once the grant cycle closes on the 17th is when you're going to start to have your meetings and you're going to be doing grant review. In order for you to meet that January 17th deadline in 2024, you really should be having your voting meetings before the end of the year. And we understand that it's a tough time and, um, you know, uh, and that sometimes that those final meetings, those final grant review meetings have to go into January. Um, but really, if you can be thinking about as you're structuring your uh, grant cycle between September 1 and December 31st, that you're thinking about that you need to um, really uh, wrap, sort of wrap it up towards the end of the year in order to meet that January 17th deadline. Um, so the uh, the grant cycle, uh, you know, the app, we will be having a, a workshop on the application. So that's coming up in September. So most definitely that is for applicants and for LCC members. So definitely jump in on that just in case, you know, some um, councils will run their own grant uh, grant um, workshops, which is great, which is awesome, which is really helpful, and we really appreciate that. Um, so let's see, uh, the two types of grants this year has, as um, for the last, I think we started this program five years ago, the direct grant program. So we always used to be just a reimbursement-based program, um, but we started a direct grant program because we really feel like it's a really important to get money out the door before pro programs start as much as we can. Um, and it just feels a lot more equitable in order to do that so people don't have to um, have money coming out of their own pockets. And Hanukkah is going to go over that uh, as well to talk about where you should be checking that off because that's something that you have to do by September 1st as well. You have to say whether you're a reimbursement council or a direct, a direct grant council. Any questions about that? We have a PowerPoint we can send to you. If you have any questions, ask your program officer. But um, just so you know, those have to be done by August 31st. 
uh, let's see, eligibility. So, um, you know, there are many types of grants that you can be, um, that are eligible for, um, for the LCC grant program and the different types of amounts that you're giving out to people. So this is a really important section for you to take a look at, um, you know, what's eligible. And these are, um, these are, you know, the number of things that are eligible. There is one thing that has changed in the eligibility for LCC grants and another thing that we have added. So individuals, as you know, which also includes sole proprietorships uh, are eligible. Um, incorporated nonprofit organizations are eligible. Um, unincorporated associations are also eligible, which is great. So one of the new things is this incorporated for-profit organizations are now eligible for um, LCC grants, which includes corporations, partnerships, LLCs. Um, one of the things is that, um, one of the things is for any part of your granting, as you know, one of the main pieces of that is to making sure that the grant that you are approving is providing public benefit for your city or town. So that stands true for also the, um, the incorporated for-profit organizations. So as you're making your decisions about uh, the grants that you're gonna be making, it's, it's the same thing. It's, it's looking for uh, public benefit for your organization. And those are gonna be driven by your priorities, which Hanukkah will go over. The other thing that we've added this year is um, just to be sure that tribal and federal, state and municipal government organizations are eligible. Uh, you know, a, there are a lot of uh, tribal um, organizations that are out there in all throughout Massachusetts, Western Mass of the Cape. So just be thinking about that. Um, and we sort of changed the language around religious organizations. So make sure that you take a look at that. Um, LCCs cannot fund activities that are inherently religious, such as worship, instruction, or proselytization. Um, and that relig religious organizations or groups with religious affiliations are eligible as long as they are open to the general public and it's not the purpose of benefiting and pushing religious organ religious um, organizations. So that's just, we've sort of like tightened up that language. So just make sure you take a look at that. Um, and then there's more on that for the frequently asked questions. So as you know, the criteria has not changed. It is still arts, humanities, and sciences. Um, and uh, we go into basically each one of those things here. Uh, and then public benefit, as I mentioned before, really important for you uh, as grantors to be thinking really about, as I said before, what public benefit a particular program is bringing to your community. Um, we abide by obviously non-discrimination um, and there is a whole slew of information here about, about that that we, really hope that you'll read around the ADA and also around accessibility. Um, and we also have tools uh, in our guidelines that you can click on to about compliance for grantees and then our policy as well on um, accessibility. So that's gonna be important when you're reviewing grants. Um, and I think we're gonna be having a, an accessibility uh, webinar conversation sometime mid-October. So that'll be exciting. Um, so local priorities, that's something that Hanukkah is going to go over. And also in our guidelines, we have grant restrictions and those have not changed either. It's still the refreshments and the scholarship piece. Um, we talked a little bit about council initiated programs. There are some great examples of council initiated programs also on our website. So really I would go to the communities page and click on the LCC um, um, information and you'll be able to find all sorts of information about um, some of the council initiated programs that people have done. Um, the other thing is uh, with grant review and we'll, we can get, we'll get into this again um, a little later in the grant cycle, um, the, you know, the compliance on the deadline, it, it is what it is. You can, if someone doesn't get in their application by 1159 on October 17th, then they are not eligible. And you will see in your portal, it'll say um, pending. Um, so you'll you'll have a, a grouping that'll say submitted, and then you might have one that's that's that still has in draft form. And you can't even look at those after October 17th at 1159. All right, so that is a, that is a drop dead date and they have to be on the computer. They cannot mail-in, so we cannot accept paper applications. Um, applicant reviews, 
however you do them. Uh, I know that some councils do do interviews. We don't, um, you know, we don't necessarily think that's the best way to do that, but if for some reason you do, and then please, we need to um, definitely abide by the open meeting law. One of the great things is, is that you can still meet online. Um, and that has been pushed to March of 2025. So you're covered for the next two years to still be able to be doing um, uh, online uh, grant um, grant meetings and also grant decision making. So I think that's great. Um, conflict of interest law and public records law, all the same, but really again, Conflict of interest law is a really big thing um, that you should be aware of. We have a, a really robust um, definition and uh, um, and examples here in the guidelines. But if you're ever worrying like, oh, I'm not sure that this is a conflict of interest or not, we also have in the guidelines where you can go to the lawyer for the day and ask that question. They love, the Ethics Commission loves to talk to you if you have any questions about it. Uh, okay, so... Um, as you know, when you do your granting, uh, you know, as part of the guidelines, uh, applicants have the opportunity to get to reconsider um, and ask for a request for reconsideration that comes to the Mass Cultural Council, that comes to us, uh, that we as a team, um, uh, program officers take a look at, and then we'll let the uh, council know what our decision is on that request for reconsideration. So just know that 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 will say that in the letter that's going to go out to uh, to applicants if they are denied. So this is just in the guidelines to help you understand what that means. Um, one of the things that I do want to bring up is that oftentimes councils don't remember that they can do conditional approvals. So if you uh, if you want to approve somebody and you really believe they have a lot of public benefit, but they might be missing something that you want to see, you can grant a conditional approval and ask them to supply you some information before you fully approve that grant. So I just wanted to bring that up because sometimes people don't remember that. Um, you have FY23 grants, some of them, some people on their FY23 grants may not have gotten their reimbursement in yet or their direct grant in yet. Um, you can, re you can um, offer them modifications to their grant if they need it or extensions. But I do want to say one of the a best practice on this part is that if you have not heard from your grantees that you granted out in FY23, it's always a good idea to email them, ask them if they're going to be submitting their reimbursement or if they're going to be um, submitting their direct grant approval, I mean, applications, because if they are not, you can always roll that money into FY24. So if they are not going to be using that money, you want to know that ahead of your grant cycle. So it's always a good idea to check in with those people who have yet you have yet to hear from to see if they actually did their program and they're going to use their funding. Um, grant payments are either reimbursement based or direct grant based, and Hanukkah is going to go over all of that. Uh, um, <clears throat> and then we get to the grant cycle timeline. This is not only in the uh, in our guidelines, but it is also on our website. So for those of you who are new, for those of you who have been with us for a long time um, and have been doing incredible work for us, uh, the, the timeline this year is pretty much the same. Right now, you should be really thinking about um, your priorities and your guidelines and getting those into the GMS, the Smart Simple System, by the 31st. The grant cycle will open on September 1st and you will not be able to make any of those changes. You're gonna meet with your fiscal officer who has the account form now to go over your finances and you're gonna start advertising the grant program um, in any way, whether it's in papers, social media, just letting people know. Outreach is key. You wanna get as many people to know about the grant cycle as possible. Thinking about people that you haven't talked to before that, you, that maybe be new to your communities, really important to reach out to them. Um, October 17th is the deadline for the LCC applications, but it is also the deadline for you to fill in the financial sections of your annual report. So as I said, we will be having another webinar about the financial reports. So we will talk about that um, in mid-October. Mid um, in November, you're gonna be holding your voting meetings. You're gonna send out denial letters. Those have to go out first before you send your approval letters, those do not go out until you complete the annual report in full. And that is not until January. Um, the denial letters go out. 
They are sent out by our system. You no longer have to send out those denial letters yourself anymore. Those denial letters will be sent out by the system by basically the way that you're clicking through um, your, uh, your portal. And then in January, you're gonna submit your annual report. Your approval notifications are gonna go out. You're gonna begin processing your requests for direct grants or reimbursements. And then you're gonna hold grant receptions, which is what we love because we love coming to grant receptions. Um, so you're going to start planning for the next year. You're going to hold grant receptions, which are an amazing way to get the community together, to celebrate the people that you funded, to invite your municipal officers, to invite your state legislators. And it's just a huge party and everyone's really excited to see what's going on uh, in your communities. So um, so that's basically the timeline for, uh, for the grant cycle this year. So uh, we're going to switch now to updating your priorities and local guidelines, which, as I say here, has to be done ASAP. And I'm going to turn that over to Hanako. Hanako? Yeah, thank you, Lisa. OK, so and I'm Hanako. Um, I'm one of the program officers um, and the communities team. And it's nice to see familiar names here and nice to meet those of you and see your names for those we don't know. Um, I'm going to be covering the guidelines and priorities report um, and all of that, all of the information that you need to know about um, the portions of it so that you'll know how to fill it out. And then I'll be doing a walkthrough in the smart simple as well. So you'll know exactly how to fill it out and submit it. So Lisa already mentioned this, but the report is due on August 31st at midnight. Um, it is coming up. We have a little bit more than a week to do this. And you know we cannot accept late submissions because on September 1st, those local guidelines and priorities that you submitted in Smart Simple are going to become visible to all applicants on our website on your local cultural council page. And we want to make sure that all applicants are receiving the same information, so we really can't accept late submissions. Another important thing to note about this is that your local guidelines and priorities don't automatically roll over from last year. So in the case that you've met and you've decided, we know our guidelines and priorities really worked for, for us this year, you do have to go back to your guidelines and priorities that you used last year and paste them into this year's report and submit that report so that they will show up for, your, um, for this coming grant cycle. And then in this report, there are three things. So the first thing is that you'll be updating your local priorities and local guidelines that you'll be using for this FY24 grant cycle. The second thing is that you'll be reporting if you'll be using reimbursement grants or direct grants as your grant payment method for FY24. And I'll be going over that as well. And the third thing is that you're going to update and verify your council's member list. And um, we're really excited about this. We actually have a video now. Carolyn, who's one of our program officers, did create a video that walks you through how to add new members um, in Smart Simple, as well as how to update um, information about existing council members. So that is a resource that is available on our YouTube page. So one thing that when we talk about guidelines and priorities, a big question that we often get is, what is the difference? What is the difference between guidelines and priorities? So guidelines are, um, they clearly communicate any local application instructions or restrictions. So examples of this include, maybe you wanna limit the dollar amount awarded to any one applicant, or maybe you wanna limit the number of applicants uh, applications that any one applicant can submit because you're dealing with limited funds. So these are very, um, you know, you're saying that this is what we will allow. So they're really about restrictions. Local priorities and local review criteria help you to support projects that best meet the needs of your community. So it's really about you know, that keyword priorities. So examples of this are you might want to prioritize applicants who offer programs or events in your local community. Maybe you receive a lot of applications for events that are happening um, in cities or towns that are a little bit further. Maybe you want to prioritize the ones that are happening in your community. You can also prioritize applications from LGBT organizations and organizations that center BIPOC or Black, Indigenous, and people of color individuals and communities. So again, the real difference is 
um, guidelines are more about instructions and restrictions. Priorities are, again, are what are going to help you um, figure out which grants you'd like to um, fund over others. And guidelines and priorities are very important because they help you decide our, um, what grants you'd like to fund. And as Lisa mentioned, the guidelines are kind of they are a little bit vague, so these allow you to use that community input and figure out what you would actually like to see in your community and be responsive to what you're hearing from your community members. Um, we do have more examples on our website. Um, again, we'll be sending out this presentation afterwards, and it'll also be posted to the website, you'll, so you'll be able to click this link. The next part um, that mentioned that will be in this report is the grant payment method. So reporting to us which grant payment method you'll be using, reimbursement grants. I'm sure a lot of you know this, but the grants are paid after the programs are complete versus with direct grants, grantees are paid after receiving their approval notification. Um, there is more paperwork up front with direct grants, but hopefully we we the hope is that there's more paperwork up front, but you'll be able to have um, it's less of a rolling process where you're reimbursing multiple receipts throughout the grant cycle. And it does make it so that you're working on giving funds and doing um, and working with your municipal municipal fiscal officer to distribute the funds in more of like a restrict restricted time frame as opposed to throughout the year. Um, more information about this is, again, in the um, LCC guidelines. We also have a page dedicated to all of this information on our website. So, again, I encourage you to visit um, the website. The link is here. Um, it's also should be pretty easy to find, we hope, on, um, on our, in the LCC toolkit on the website. And one thing that we want to mention here is that we are encouraging councils to become direct grant um, councils if you aren't already. We offer this option um, to really eliminate that reimbursement based um, granting requirements. So um, this is because that makes grant money available full and upfront to grant recipients. Right. So first, it enhances LCC programming opportunities by imposing less financial hardship on potential grantees. There might be potential applicants in your communities that might want to apply for funding, but maybe they don't have those funds up front. So direct granting allows you to give those funds and may potentially fund programs that wouldn't otherwise happen. And then second, we also want to simplify the grant payment process for municipalities and councils which is kind of what I talked about in the previous slide. Um, I do wanna mention that we've also received some feedback and we've also heard from um, cultural council members that they have gotten questions from their municipalities about whether or not they can do direct grant payment in the first place because um, local municipalities don't allow for um, payment other than in a reimbursement form. Um, but we did check with the State Department of Revenue, the Division of Local Services, and we do have um, a ruling on that. And there is language here. Please reach out to your program officer if you have any questions about the granting methods, if you have any questions about this language, we are definitely here to help you um, and figure out which um, grant payment method works for your council. Great. Okay, so I'm going to go walk through Smart Simple with you to, to show you exactly how to submit the report. So we're going to go to Smart Simple, and I have that open here. Okay, so this is for a, a fake LCC. So I am on um, Test LCC. We've we've logged in. I'm on my home screen. It says welcome to me and then we're going to roll we're going to go down to lcc annual report which is the second heading we're filling out this first report that says guidelines and priorities again it's due august 31st 
going to click into that. And if, if when you scroll down, you're going to see that there are two entries on this page. That first one, FY24, this is the one that you will be submitting for this upcoming grant cycle. There is also another um, report that is available. That is the one from last year, the FY23 report. So if you do want to use your guidelines and priorities from last year, you are very welcome to open last year's. And then you will see under the second tab, LCC cycle. Unfortunately, test LCC didn't submit them last year, but um, if you did submit them, they should be here. So you can copy these over, put them in a document and then paste them into the new report. So let's go ahead and fill out that FY24 report. So I'm gonna go back, click back into guidelines and priorities. Okay, so we see FY24, it's in draft form. We're gonna open this report. The first part, you're gonna see your staff contact information. Mine is blank, but yours will show up with your staff contact, your program officer. They'll come up with their name and their, inf their contact information, including email and phone number. So please reach out to them if you have any questions. Um, you will also see, if you scroll down, um, information about your cultural council. All of this, we want to make sure that we verify this information. It will be posted publicly to your cultural council webpage on the Mass Cultural Council site. If it's if it's correct, everything looks good, you can click yes. If it's not, there's a link right here that says please update your organization profile. It's a really handy link because when you click it, it's going to take you directly to the page where you can edit all that information. So if anything's incorrect, you can edit it here and then click save and then it will update. Okay, so let's say that this is correct. We want to confirm that we've completed. And another really important thing as you're filling out this report, we always want to click save draft. Uh, we never know what happens, what's going to happen. Maybe it doesn't save. We will go off to something else. We put more information in. We don't want to lose any of that information. So every single time you update, click Save Draft. Okay, so that's part one. The second part of this report is this LCC Cycle tab at the top of the page. It's first going to ask you about your community input date. So this is the most recent date your council collected community input. So maybe it's a survey that you sent out, or maybe you attended um, a event that um, that you funded and you talked to some people at that event. Whatever that last date was, you're going to select it. So let's say um, it was in July. Let's say the 19th. You can put that date in, we click on it, and then I'll save here. The next part is we're going to put in your council priorities. So let's see, test LCC actually came up with some local guidelines and priorities in a separate document. So we're going to copy these and paste them right in. Just going to make sure that the whole thing copied over. We also have some sample guidelines. I'm gonna copy these, insert them. And again, I wanna make sure that none of this information gets lost, so I'm hitting save draft. Okay, the next section, it's gonna ask you for make, if we're doing direct grants or reimbursement grants. Test LCC has met and voted and decided that they are doing direct grants this year. Again, I'm going to click Save Draft just in case. And then we're going to go to our member list. These are the uh, members of Test LCC. Um, you might recognize some names here. Um, here you'll say if it's if the if it's um, up to date. If it's if it is great, you're going to click yes. If it isn't, you can actually go ahead and click no. And there will be information about how to update your your um, member list. This will pop up. We also, again, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, there is a video on our YouTube channel with information and a walkthrough um, of how to do that. So I recommend checking that out as well. But for now, let's say this is correct. So we're gonna say yes, all this information is good. 
we're going to confirm the completion of the section. For now, we're going to ignore this. This is going to become relevant later. Again, saving draft. And then we're going to click after we review everything is correct, we're going to click submit. And one final step, there is gonna be a, an alert that comes up that is asking you if you're sure that you wanna submit. We are sure, we're gonna click yes. And it's gonna take us back to the home page. If you wanna make sure that you properly submitted the, um, the report, you can go back into guidelines and priorities scroll down, you'll notice for the FY24 report, it no longer says draft, but it now says pending approval. That means that you've correctly submitted the report. And you're all set. So I'm going to move, go back to a presentation. I'm going to turn it back to Lisa um, to talk about upcoming things. Thank you, Hanako. Um, and the other thing too is the great thing about Smart Simple and Smart Simple and GMS are the same thing. It's the grant management system is called Smart Simple. So just so we know that. Uh, one of the great things about um, the Smart Simple program for the LCCs is every time you go to a tab like Hanako just showed you in the top part of it, it really gives you detailed instructions about what to do when you're in that tab. So, um, so if you have any questions about that, just you know, look back at that and it'll help you go through in every one of the tabs as you're filling out um, the Smart Simple system. So yes, so um, we have some upcoming webinars coming up, the LCC applicant webinar that I talked about before, which is gonna be on September 12th. So please register for that. That is not only for applicants, but it is also for LCC members. Um, and uh, and it, it is all, and we'll also record it, so it'll be available for you to share with your uh, potential um, applicants that uh, will be applying to your LCC. And then we are doing the financial reporting webinar, which is going to be on September 28th, and that is going to go over all of those pieces about the account form and to calculate the amount available for granting so that when you go into uh, the grant cycle after the 17th, you will absolutely know how much money you have to grant out. Uh, and um, and then you can move from there. And then uh, we are also going to be, oh, so those are the two things. We, and we're also going to be doing a webinar on accessibility uh, sometime at the end of October as you're making your um, grant decisions. And then uh, all of this, the financial reporting um, information on that second tab next to guidelines, you'll see it. And the nice thing about your portal, it's going to give you the dates when things are due. So when you go into your portal, you're going to see council and priorities, um, uh, priorities and guidelines are due uh, on October on August 31st, and then you're going to see that financial report is due on October 17th. So you'll constantly be given information about um, about when the dates of these things are. So. Uh, as I said before, the LCC account forms have been sent to your municipal fiscal officer. If uh, if you do not um, hear from them, they are supposed to reach out to you uh, by I would say the first week, the end of the first week in September, first you know second week of September. Please contact us uh, and let us know. We perhaps that is no longer the fiscal officer for your community. Um, and we just need to send out the forms again. But uh, but it's best to meet with them between September 1st and September 30th so that you have all of that information in hand before you start your grant cycle. And I think that's it. Uh, I know that was a quick overview, but we do have all of the documents for you to review and um, webinars, and we will be doing another short video about getting into the system. There's a new verification code that you're gonna to need to, to in order to get onto the system once you get in, once you put in your email address and your password, you'll have to do a verification code. So we're gonna go over that as well. So um, just make sure that you're checking back with the website and that you are on the list uh, to get our, um, our monthly mailings and your program officers. Now that we're starting the grant cycle, your program officers will be emailing you each week um, to sort of like give you an update of things that are due.